What is up dudes and lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Nuts guys. Today I've got another deck profile for you. This time we're looking at Sub Terrors. Um, this is one of my favorite decks of all time. Seriously, like this is the first deck I took to a competitive event, even though I got 33rd out of the, and top 32 was a uh, was a uh, top cut, you know. So that's kind of rough. But that was so long ago now, and I finally come back to the deck. I mean, I kind of hopped off it for a while. It was a very simplistic deck because I was playing the pure version, and I'm still playing the pure version here. I just don't really love. Dragoon, I think it's boring, and I don't really love the Numeron engine when you're just playing like a ton of Numeron cards, that's also kind of boring to me. So we're playing a pure Subterra version, but this is post Blazing Vortex, because I think there's a couple cards in Blazing Vortex that are particularly hellishly awesome for this deck uh, that I want to point out, so keep in mind I have some proxies in here just because uh, obviously Blazing Vortex isn't out yet. Um, and also one card that I don't have that's very expensive that old Johnny hasn't been able to pick up yet. But yeah, without further ado, uh, let's jump into this profile. All right, so starting off with the monsters, of course, for the sub terrors, three copies of sub terror guru, three copies of sub terror fiendus, one copy of nemesis archer, and one copy of Umastrix. Well, listen, I feel like this is something that needs to be talked about, okay? Because a lot of people, a lot of people have dropped Umistrix from their list. Now, I understand where you're coming from. It's a brick. It's kind of an annoying brick. And if you don't actually have multiple other starters with you, or at least like a city, you're not going to be able to trigger him uh, very quickly and get him onto the field and make him live. So it is kind of brutal to draw him. But... Because we're playing pure sub terrors, I actually do think it's correct to play Umastrix. If you're playing Dragoon, the Dragoon package, then fine, because you have power in other ways that you can get to, as well as the fact that you already have uh, Red Eyes, uh, Black Dragon, and Dark Magician as two very, very terrible bricks to draw. So you take out two bricks and you put him in. Same thing with the Numeron engine, you're getting power from other ways in your deck, but. Um, you know, you you also add the callings in as terrible bricks in your deck. So you take out the bricks, and so you replace it with one kind of like half brick. I don't even, he's not even fully a brick all the time. I like seeing him uh, a fair amount of the time, but still, I understand. Um, so yeah, I just think in a pure variant, I think Umastrix is totally, totally fine. He adds power to your deck. He allows you to put another body on board when you're under like Tikaboo and uh, to still push for a ton of damage, extra removal, extra disruptions, and uh, yeah. So once you get set up for him, you just, it, it, it's so, so strong, and I, and I do like him as a one of. I will go on record saying that. Um, the only other monster I play in the deck, though, is Ash. Uh, that's it. Just three Ash. Nothing crazy here. It's just so versatile, so good. It's impactful when it's, like, negating stuff like, um, uh, blah, 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 Nadir Servant. You have stuff like Red Eyes Fusion. Uh, in other decks, I just play, like, the hard Red Eyes, uh, cards. So, uh, just an insane card and just negates so many impactful cards in the metagame. It's just, it's just good. It's just good versus everything. Um, but I didn't want to. I feel like the format's slow enough right now where you don't have to play 10 plus hand traps just because going second is so scary. Because I do think you can win duels by just setting a couple back row, setting a guru, and, and, and playing into your opponent, seeing what they want to do. So here we go. Spells uh, Hidden City. Uh, three of this, and then obviously four of this. Uh, this is the best card in the deck. Uh, I understand Guru's the most important piece f uh, functionally as far as like putting the deck together, but City's the best card to see in the deck because this card equals you a Guru plus a Fiendus and then a recoverable search every single turn. It's insane. Battle protection, the ability to just flip up and down every turn. It, it's, it's so good. This card's insane. Uh, play it at four. Next up, three Pot of Extravagance, except not White. Uh, this is one of my proxies here. Uh, this is actually supposed to be Pot of Prosperity, the new pot card coming in Blazing Vortex. This card is absolutely insane, guys. I've made videos talking about this card because when the card initially got out, uh, came out and it got revealed and I talked about it, I had a lot of people in my comment section telling me it's not as good as Extravagance. I'm here to tell you, I kind of disagree. I think Extravagance can be better in certain decks that just want to draw cards, draw cards, draw cards. Fine. Extravagance is an actual plus one. But as far as prosperity goes in the form of Yu-Gi-Oh, it just allows you to break the mechanics of, oh, you're not supposed to know what you draw? Well, this card kind of just is whatever draw you want. 
it's insane. Um, and, and there's just so many aspects to it. And specifically in this pure version, where uh, the only times I really struggled when I was playing this deck competitively uh, in the past was when I just couldn't find a sub tear card at all. I'm top decking, I just draw, draw trap, 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 trap. Eventually, any deck's going to break through. If you have nothing but defense, you have to apply pressure to close the game out. And, I, and those were the duels that you really struggle in. Extravagance draws you two into your deck, but Prosperity lets you look six for a city, for a guru, for a whatever. If you just want a powerful trap, look for a strike, look for a, you know, um, uh, a uh, Ice Dragon's Prison, right? There's so many different things. So just keep that in mind. I think the card's insane in here because we really have like three guru and four city. So if you just don't open your engine, this card lets you dig six cards deep for one of those seven cards, or a duality, which can then give you another chance to look three more cards deep to look for uh, one of those cards. And so I think this card's incredibly, incredibly strong in this variant. I just think that the consistency it offers you is more important than the plus one that Extravagance offers you in a pure variant. If you're playing stuff like the, Dra the, the Dragoon package and stuff, you also throw in the fact that you have like three red eyes fusion and maybe even you play the extra cards that search it out so you just add that many cards so maybe extravagance is better because you're just your chances of drawing those cards are, are high enough uh then you appreciate the the plus one but yeah um yeah so i, I just want to make sure i explain that uh okay first a couple of one or a couple of like utility cards for spells two cosmic cyclone in the main uh this doesn't like Drytron's really the only thing this doesn't do anything against, but Virtual World, you really don't care about what their deck does except for Chuche. So you need to be able to handle Chuche. So Cosmic's here. I side the third for sure. Uh, one, Subterra Cave Clash. I don't normally love this card in this deck, um, but I just think with how grindy the format is, I just think every deck in the format kind of wants to grind because we're in a slow format. If you play a deck that doesn't want to grind, you might just struggle. So a lot of decks grind right now, even the combo decks, like grind pretty well. So Cave Clash is just insane. Like one of those really nice cards that in a grind can come up like really, really like clutch to make sure you don't run out of Fiendesses, to make sure you can get Umastrix or, or Nemesis Archer back from Grave, like anything. So pretty nice there. And then of course the Called by the Grave, Ashes of Pain, um, and then just it just generically has like great synergy, uh, like fucking with every deck that plays in the graveyard, which pretty much every deck in the format does. So cool, that works. All right, moving to the traps now. Three, final battle. I think with the upgrade of consistency with Prosperity, to like getting to your engine, this card at three is totally fine. I know some people don't like it at three because if you draw this without a sub tear card, it's pretty awful. But I just think with Prosperity giving you a very high chance to just like see uh, a sub tear starter card, like drawing this with anything is like really, really good. So uh, I'm about it. I still like it. And um, yeah, you want like if you get two on the field and like you're already in Guru, like it feels so hard to beat. Like you can't be beaten in battle. You're going to get to flip every turn and get a free search. Like, it's insane. It's crazy. You just get so much advantage. All right, then a couple two ofs, uh, two punishment and two ice dragons prison. Uh, this is just a cool little like, I don't know thing here. Punishment is just insane. It's just like so powerful. It's pop two or it's pop one. So search a super poly. I know I don't play it in the main, but I would play it in the side, um, which is really cool. So there's some interesting things there. Uh, but yeah, just love this. And then ice dragons prison. This is a proxy because I didn't buy it when it was cheap, and now it's like forty five dollars like cheapest it's insane uh so yeah i'd play it because it's now dragoon it's an out to stuff that can't be targeted or destroyed and stuff um so yeah it's just really nice to have um i would consider playing it at three but i just think space is a little wonky and there are definitely cards in here that uh you side out or that could be wiggled on but i, I really like them uh, one of which is Solemn Strike. This is one of the best cards going second because if you just have it with any trap, you're essentially going to have a way to like break a, a decent portion of your opponent's board. And then from there, it just depends how actually full their board was, if they're going to be able to push through it. But it's insane. It's just like you activate a trap. They try to negate it with one of their boss monsters, and then you Solemn Strike them. So they lose the monster. Your other trap resolves, and they've lost like half of, if not like their full board, which is crazy. Um, there. Next up for another really, really spicy card in the deck. This is Angel Statue Azarune. This is a proxy for it. Obviously, it's another Blazing Vortex card that is not out yet. 
it's an insanely cool card. If you don't know what this card is, it's a trap monster, kind of like the Eldritch monsters, where you can like activate it to summon itself. It's an 1818 uh, light level four fairy monster when it's summoned, and it has two different effects when it's on the field. So the first effect is if your opponent, uh, if your opponent would special summon a monster, you contribute it or another like trap monster essentially to negate the summon and destroy the monster that was attempting to be summoned. That's only inherent summons. Keep that in mind. And uh, also, if this card is ever destroyed by battle, you destroy the monster that destroyed it by battle. So, also some extra little removal bonus there. Um, the reason I think this card is really cool, particularly in this build, is this is pure sub terrors. We're not playing the Dragoon stuff. We're not playing the Numeron stuff. We're not playing anything extra in the deck. So, this card is not only an extra disruption if we need it, but it can also just be an 1818 body that gives us extra removal of a monster or just to be a beater, right? Like, Sometimes one of the biggest problems with sub is you just can't kill your opponent. Some of these decks that can play pretty defensively, you're literally just like, I can't break through them. But an extra body can help you at least get some damage in and at least put them on a clock um, and just help you get a kill one turn sooner, give them one less turn to try and make a comeback and turn the duel around. And I really like this card for that. It's just so many different things. Disruption, removal of a monster in the battle phase, or just a body that helps you get in for extra damage. Uh, and I don't think its effects are once per turn at all, any of them. So you could literally set three and summon three. Uh, and if you didn't need to use any of their effects, you just have like, what is that, like 5,400 damage there? No. No, not 5,400. Yeah, it's 5,400. I'm crazy. Yeah, 5,400 damage right there. Plus a guru with like a, a final battle is uh, is game. It's literally OTK. So it's just one of those cool cards that just can do so many different things for you. I want to test it out. I'm not sure if it's entirely great yet, but uh, I do think it does have a lot of uh, promise. So I'm going to test it out. I'm going to see how it goes. But obviously this is more of a speculative video on like how the deck can work after Blazing Vortex. But I think the card is definitely worth testing. And the last card here is Tikaboo. Uh, this card's insane. Um, you know, so many decks just can't play under this. And even the fact that, like, Drytron and, um, uh, Jesus, Virtual World can kind of play around this to an extent, it still limits their plays a lot. So I even think there's just value in the fact that you're going to limit their plays. It takes away flexibility or takes away general the general ceiling of their deck and puts them in a tough spot there. So even just doing that still makes this card worth playing. Uh, probably in games two and three, though, you're siding it out against those matchups for just more impactful cards, but that's totally fine. You can worry about that when you get there. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the main. 40 cards in the main, sub tears. You know, we're trying to keep it consistent. We have seven actual starter cards, so we want to see them. Which takes us to the extra deck. Starting off with the links, there's nothing in it. There's not going to be anything too crazy here. Anima, this is just for Fiendus. You could link Fiendus off for this to potentially steal a monster in a simplified game state and just like beat your opponent down. One uh, Phoenix, just in case it comes up to pop a back row, fine. Uh, also, the Earth Charm removable. All the whole sub tier package is uh, Earth, by the way, so that works there. And then one copy of Predator Plant Verte Anaconda. This is another card that's just kind of cool. Um, I would side Super Poly potentially in the deck. So if you are like, this is a cool way. We're just having any two monsters generically on the field uh, can just get you the ability to just like rip apart your opponent's board. So pretty cool there. Just kind of generic stuff. It's not going to come up all the time, but when it does, it can be clutch, uh, which gets us to some Super Poly targets, two Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, two Predator Plant Trivia Veritum, and two My Dragon of the Swamp. I don't think there's any other targets that I'm specifically like. Oh man, this specific meta deck makes this an interesting target, or, or anything like that. I really don't think there's like much going on like that in the way of like the current meta decks. But any of these could come up versus like any random deck. So if it's a matchup that makes Super Poly good, obviously uh, we look at siding the Super Poly in, and then these guys become very important. Uh, next up for Dogmatica targets, we've got the three Ntis, of course. Just because we have to uh, Prosperity, potentially, these away. So if we do that, it just has extras, just because uh, that. Uh, one, Predoplant, Chimera Reflasia. So we could Punishment dump him to pop a card that's a lower than 2,500. Then on your next standby phase, you can add Super Poly to your hand. And then uh, you can't summon because the dark punishment will be locking you out of the extra deck until the end of your next turn. But you'll be able to set Super Poly and then Super Poly your opponent on the next turn, which is pretty good. So in a grindy game, I mean, it's like pop a card, makes punishment, pop a card, and search a card. So it's literally just the hardest of plus ones. 
And then also one uh, Master of Oz. Uh, I just wanted something big just in case like a random situation versus a big monster came up and like something was bigger than 2,500 or 3,000 like Trivia Veritum is and you couldn't pop it. So just having a big monster like him and he's the only one that I really had that made sense but uh, that actually worked here. But it's a cool card. I've always liked this card. So just it could be so amazingly amazing if I actually needed to use it at some point. Uh, so I hope that happens at some point, but I, it probably won't. I mean, theoretically, right? Because like the two things that would even get that big in the format are like, um, what is it? Is like, um, oh man, I'm, I'm blanking so hard. It's like Dragoon after it negates something, which can't be targeted, so punishment or destroyed, so punishment just doesn't work on him. Uh, Ultimate Falcon is is un, un, uh, affected by that stuff. And I can't remember what another card. I guess Boral Sword in Battle Phase you could get with it, which is not the worst. Although they'd probably be bigger than 4,200 to be honest. So it's not a good, uh, it's not a good scapegoat anyway uh, to that in uh, that situation. So, uh, but yeah, I, r I really think Subterrors is, is one of my favorite. It's, it, it is one of my favorite decks. I mean, I don't need to think on that at all. Um, it's a really amazing deck. It's a really awesome control deck. If you love simple, like, control -y decks, this deck is great. You just need to make sure you get better, uh, get good at, like, making, like, in-game decisions with routes to go as far as what to search when, what traps and interruptions to use at what points to make them, you know, the most efficient use of those. Um, but, yeah, it's a really cool deck. Uh, hopefully this guy's, this gives you a little bit of excitement for the, the Blazing Vortex. I know the set's not too crazy overall, but I do think there are some things that are really exciting about the set. Um, and, you know, some of these cards that I showed off in this deck are those reasons. So I'm going to end it off here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff from me in the future. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.